If anyone wants just a prescription for what to get for a future proof build right now, I've put together a PC parts picker list. I've linked that in the description below. And now I'll just uh, take a moment to talk through why I've chosen each of the parts on that list. First item on the list is the CPU. And if you want to know why I've gone for an Intel platform, essentially it's because I believe it's the best value for games right now and also provides the best upgrade path. If you want to go into detail on why I think it's the best value proposition for you as a gamer right now, check out my recent video which will appear up in the corner just now. I'm recommending the 10600K because if I was you, I'd be planning to upgrade to a Rocket Lake CPU when they come out. And that's going to enable PCIe 4.0 on most Z490 motherboards, including the one listed below. And that's gonna be really important for RTX IO and everything that I've mentioned in the previous video, as well as making the most of your GPU. If you wanna just buy one CPU and never upgrade, consider getting a higher end Intel 10th gen CPU, such as the 10900K, or wait for AMD to release the Ryzen 4000 series chips later this year. But neither of these options give me the same confidence as Rocket Lake would in terms of not bottlenecking a high-end 30 series RTX card. The 10600K is an excellent value proposition, even as an all-round multi-purpose processor, and it will destroy all the games that are gonna be released between now and when Rocket Lake is released. I've put quite an expensive and elaborate cooler here. I wanted to do a triple fan radiator cooler for this build just because the 10600K series is already really hot. Rocket Lake's probably still gonna be 14 nanometer. They might push the power envelope even harder. And I wanted to allow a little room for overclocking as well. I will link an article in the description with a list of other coolers which have been tested to work well with 10900Ks, which should give you plenty of room for the Rocket Lake power envelope and you could save a bit of money with some of the other ones. But this one's uh, very safe, plenty of extra cooling capacity. This motherboard I've chosen because it's a really good price point for most people. It's still a power user's board and it has AI overclocking features, or I should say automated overclocking features. I doubt there's very much AI actually involved in those um, as an AI specialist, but for some casual overclocking, it will serve you really well. Gigabyte has also done a great job of including all the components that you will need for full PCIe 4.0 compatibility when the Rocket Lake CPUs are released. So this here is the PCIe 4.0 socket. That won't work straight away. It'll only work once Rocket Lake is released. And in the meantime, you have two other M2 slots, which you can use PCIe 3 NVMe drive. And then when Rocket Lake's released, you could buy a secondary PCIe 4.0 drive to serve all your super high speed RTX IO needs. For memory, I've included the Patriot Viper Steel 16 gigabyte kit, which is more than fast enough to keep up with uh, the 10 series CPUs and will have plenty of overhead to support the Rocket Lake CPUs when they come out. It's only a 16 gigabyte kit. I'm trying to keep this parts list to some sort of same level where mere mortals can afford it. And 16 gigabyte is gonna do just fine um, for games released in the foreseeable future. And when it stops being fine, your motherboard has four slots. You can always get another kit in future. It's not RGB. I think there might be an RGB version around on Amazon if you dig, but this parts list is performance first. First storage drive I'm recommending is the Samsung 970 EVO. It's very, very fast consistently ranked extremely high in used benchmarks and it's an excellent value proposition. This is just a 500 gigabyte drive. There is a one terabyte version of this, but you might want to save your budget to get a nice big Gen 4 NVMe after Rocket Lake comes out because this is where you're going to want to install most of your games to take advantage of that RTX IO high speed game asset loading cap capability. Now this gigabyte NVMe 4 SSD has a heatsink built on, but if you wanted to save money on this build, you could just get this drive, undo six screws along the sides and prise the heatsink off. There's just a couple of thermal pads and you could stick it into one of these standard PCIe 3 M2 slots. In the meantime, PCIe 3 and 4 NVMe is intercompatible. That said, just be aware, I don't know what that might do to your warranty on this drive removing the heatsink. So do this at your own risk. Once Rocket Lake is released, you could then take it out of that slot, pop the heatsink back on and plug it into this, which will be enabled for PCIe 4 NVMe. For the case, I'm recommending Fantex Eclipse P400A ATX mid-power case. 
This case is ranked very highly in Gamers Nexus Air Cooling Case Roundup. It's got plenty of room for your big RTX 30 series cards. It's got room for a three fan radiator at the front. You could reorganize these fans so that it's in a pull configuration, drawing air in the front. Then there's room for three out to take fans, two at the top and one at the back, which is a configuration which will work well with NVIDIA's new cooling design, which vents air out the back of the card and out through this rear fan. Finally, for the power supply, I'm recommending the Seasonic Prime Ultra Titanium 850 watt. I'm a little bit of a power supply snob, which is why I'm recommending a non-budget power supply here. Your power supply is the backbone of your system and any instability in your power supply's performance can cause issues with any other part of your system. Seasonic manufacture their own power supplies directly, so they're directly accountable for the quality. 850 watt is possibly more than you need. 750 watt is a number which has popped up here and there in NVIDIA's official recommendations around 12 pin powered cards, like uh, possibly some models of the RTX 3090. But I wanted to make sure I was recommending parts here, which will absolutely work for you, regardless of which RTX 30 series card you get, and also Rocket Lake when it's released. Certainly there's room to save money on a more budget power supply here, possibly dipping down to 750 watt as well, but do so at your own risk. So again, this list is linked in the description below. I'd love to hear what your planned build is while you prepare for next gen. So please comment with your parts lists or even link your PCPartsPicker.com build in the comments below and I'll check them out and let you know if I have any comments or suggestions about your builds.